Today you are drinking Old Crow. Old Crow is a Kentucky straight bourbon from the Jim Beam Distillery. Old Crow was first made by Dr. James Crow, a Scottish immigrant who began distilling in Frankfort, Kentucky in the 1830s. He was the first to use the sour mash process of creating a fermented mash for the distillation using the yeast from the previous batch to kickstart the fermentation on the next one. Old Crow comes in at 80 proof. We purchased this bottle for $10 at our local store, but your prices may vary. Enjoy! Thanks, Joyce. Let's uh, dive in and see what I think. It's been musty. <laughs> I'm getting, yeah, musty grain. Just blended grain. Musty and dusty. I'm getting barley, wheat, little rye, oak. I want to say oak, but it's, it's, I'm not getting oak. oak. It's, for me, it's like a tannic. It's like oak adjacent. I was going to say like a tannic. It's a, it's a tannicness, I'm assuming. Is yeah. Mm-hmm. Get a bitterness, tannic bitterness, but. I would assume comes from oak. I'm getting like a, a dry wine. Like a very, very dry white wine. I could see that. Smell what I suppose. That means it's very flat. There's not much to this nose, though. No. Yeah. There is... It's not super sweet. There's a note of sweetness, but not... That's not like a major characteristic. Like a, a touch of honey. Yeah. yeah. Like a little, a little dollop. All right, I'm going to dive in for a taste. I like that. I, I like that a lot. It's hard to describe, but it's... Yeah. It's soothing. Not much of a finish. Not much of a finish, but it's there. It's like medium oh. short. Short, short finish. Getting a little bit of melon on the tail. A lot of spices. Right? Yes, very spicy. A lot, of ba- a lot of baking spice. I'm really excited to find out what this is. Yeah, I am too. This is just so hard to describe. Yeah, it is. Other um, than delicious. <laughs> I do think there's some melon. Yeah. Definitely some, like, baking spice. Light floral. Very light. But I'm picking it up. Honey. There's definitely some honey. I think the biggest impact for me is definitely those spices. Those are the, the most the biggest characteristic of it. I, I don't want to say sharp, like, in a bad way, but like, it's, yeah. it's it's sharp, like, in a good way. It's like, boom. But yeah. bold, I guess. Bold yes. is a good. Vibrant. Vibrant spice note, yeah. I really like this. Ready for water? I'm afraid to. Yeah, but I'm afraid to, but I'm also for science. Hoping that it Yeah, I, I'm it could just it, make it like outstandingly good. You know, like I said, it's really good. It's just hard to really pick anything out. So maybe it could help us identify delicious. <laughs> well, while we're letting the water mingle, let's tell you about our homes on the internet. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at The Bottom Shelf. You can find us on Twitter at Shelf Whiskey. Yes. Shelf Whiskey. You can also find us on our new home on the internet at podhubnetwork.com. We are finally up there. You can see us and uh, listen to us and subscribe to us as a podcast. Um, so please check us out there and all the other Pittsburgh-based podcasts. You can also find us on Patreon, and you can buy me a coffee where you can buy us whiskey. You can also buy this bottle on Drizzly. I had to think about it for a second. You can also buy this bottle on Drizzly, uh, down the link below. Uh, proceeds from, through that link, either for this bottle or for anything you buy, will help uh, the channel, and we appreciate your support. I'm getting more of that tannin now. Really? Yes. I'm getting more brown sugar on the nose now. I'm also getting more brown sugar and more leather. Yeah, leather. It's definitely got leather. Yes. That's the, that, that musty note. Yeah. That's turned into like a, a leather note. It's much smoother now. Yes, definitely smoother. On the nose or the taste? On the nose. I hadn't tasted it. I finish. But now I tasted it. And oh, I, oh. I really like it. Oh. Mm. How's it? Caramely? Yes. Thicker? I'm, I'm getting more honey, more caramel. It went a little bit different. Not melon fruit, but more like a pear. The flavors went across my tongue instead of just straight down the middle. Yeah. It changes the the mouthfeel, it's much more velvety. The finish is a little bit more extended now. It's still short, though. It's still short. I would put it more in medium now than short right. medium. See, I would go from short to short medium. But still lean me short. It's softer as it goes down. Not smoother, softer. I'm definitely a fan. I'm excited to find out what it is. I'm ready for some ratings if you guys are. Yep. This radio's all over, Let's start with some nose. Start with the nose rating. I'm going to give it a 3.5. I 
I think the nose is actually this whiskey's weak point. I liked every note that I got, but it was hard to pick out specific notes, but I liked the overall profile of the notes on the nose. I agree with Eric all around. I'm going to go 3.5 as well. The, the nose was the weak point on it. A lot more complexity in the nose uh, than I was really expecting. Overall, it was okay. I'm going to give it a three on the nose. I think the nose, I would agree with the aspect that the nose is, um, was well-rounded. Uh, it was not, you know, one unidirectional, um, but I didn't think the notes that were all there were necessarily the most interesting notes in the world, but the, the notes that were there were good and they were well balanced. So I'm going to go with a three, which is above average. We'll go on to palette. On the palette, I'm going to give this a 4.5. This is the first whiskey in a very long time that my first note has been, dang, that's good. I liked every note that I got as I continued to sip it. It's just a very good whiskey, well-rounded, lots of very good notes, added water. I was worried, but it brought out some yeah, definitely, definitely interesting held, It held up to water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go 4.5 as well. It was hard to identify really much on the palate, but like I said, it was delicious. And that is the only descriptor that I need for a whiskey to like it. So 4.5. I'm going to go 3.5, which is higher than my nose. Um, again, I thought uh, it was good on the palate, and um, but better than the nose. I think it was better than the nose, so I did increase it from there. You clearly know something we don't know because you're tanking the ratings. <laughs> <laughs> again, yes, my ratings are biased, but I don't think I mean that biased, but maybe I am. That's, not, that's what knowledge does to you. All right, let's I'm go ahead. With you. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to finish. I'm going to say that you guys keep saying that the nose is the weakness of this. I think it's the finish. I agree that it could be the finish that's a weak point on this. I am going to give it a four on the finish. I appreciated the finish more with water. Mm -hmm. I think that brought it up. It, I before would have given it a 3.5 on the finish. With the water, I give it a four. It's more complete. It's more lasting. It's more vibrant with the water. I'm going to go 3.5, the same that I have for the nose. I thought it was well-timed. I thought that there were some interesting notes on the finish that weren't on the palate that were uh, fantastic in my book. The finish could be this whiskey's weak point. I think it is the nose, personally, but I'm rating them about the same. Well, I did say it's the weak point, so I'm going to go a step down from the nose, so 2.5. I think it was an average finish. Um, I didn't think it was short. I definitely would have benefited from a little bit longer um, finish. When there was no water, it had a very bold um, palette. And I think that bold palette could have been nicely, uh, had a nice finish at the end of it and didn't really have anything. Yes, the water extenuated it a little bit, but also brought down the boldness of the palette. So extenuating the finish wasn't um, as impressive for me. So yeah, 2.5 on the finish. So now we're going to go into our guesses. So we are looking for what kind of whiskey you think this is. We're looking for proof, looking for what retail price is, and how much you'll be willing to pay for it. I'm going to go blended Irish. Uh, cereal notes make me lean that way. Higher proof, I'm going to go 88 proof. I think this is about $16 a bottle, and I would pay $14 to $16 for it. I also think it's Irish. I'm not sure what type of Irish, though. I'll go single malt. Proof? Proof. I'm going to go 84. Bringing it back to 84. I think this one's going to be surprising. I'm going to say this one is a $12 bottle, and I would probably pay 14 to 16 Okay. All right, awesome. So let's dive into uh, tasting notes and ratings of other sites, and then we'll go through our guesses and review the bottle. Um, I'm, now that you've done your guesses and you've done your ratings and everything, I can say that we've lost all credibility on the show now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm supposed to be the new. I'm supposed to not know things. I know, but we've just lost all credibility. All right, so let's, uh, that or maybe we're onto something that, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. All right. So first off, um, only one rating on this whiskey. Okay, and it's bad, isn't it? Uh, it's from Distiller, um, and it's a 71. Yup. So 71 from Distiller. 
The notes for the nose, the most common ones were waxy, honey, corn, candy corn, and raw pancake. Yes, raw pancake was a note that I found on multiple sites. I got the honey. Oh, just want to know, I got one of those. From the, the palette, corn, caramel, citrus, oak, and young. Finish, grain, and buttered popcorn. Um, all right, so your guesses were both Irish whiskey, you guessed single malt, you guessed blended. Uh, the correct answer is Kentucky Street Bourbon. No. No. Mm hmm Wow. Yep. All right, so your guesses for price were $12 and... I said 16, 16. and I would pay 14 to 16. Yeah, so 12 and 16. Uh, Eric is closer. Retail price for this bottle is $10. I knew it was going to be surprising. Uh, <laughs> Although supposedly it's actually bad, so... Your guess for uh, proof was 84, yours was 86. It is 80. I thought mine was 88. It was 88? Okay, yes. sorry. Either way, it was wrong. Um, but Eric's is closer. Whoa! <laughs> Today, you guys drank Old Crow bourbon. Are you sure that's the ball you poured this from? Mm-hmm. Because it was up here, and now it's down here. <laughs> no, okay. All right, let's go through the rest of the information on this bottle. Well, that did not taste bourbon like to me No, it at didn't. All. <laughs> this is a three-year-old bourbon from Jim Beam. It is the same Jim Beam recipe as they use for all the other Jim Beam stuff. So 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. Obviously, new charred oak. Entry proof into the barrels, 125. How are you guys disappointed in yourselves? I'm a, I'm a little disappointed. I normally get bourbons. Yeah, this did not taste like a bourbon. It I, doesn't really look... I mean, I tend to see bourbons being darker. Right. Well, so again, this is only three years old. Yeah. I think that's what throws you guys is the youngness. Um, Cause we had Black Eagle bourbon. You guys were like, what, this is bourbon? Right. Um, and that was a younger whiskey. I think it's only, what, two years? So maybe that's it. Dude. Maybe that's it. Young bourbons don't get three years. bourbon-y bourbon. -ness. Yeah. Now that being said, so you guys thought it was an Irish whiskey, right? Because probably some of that, you know, was being blind, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, people tend to not like this. It's it's a well bourbon. This is the this is literally the cheapest bourbon you can get in our store. It's not the cheapest you can get per dollar, but it is the cheapest bottle you can buy for a century familiar So Really? So for instance, Bankers Club is a one liter bottle, but it's eleven dollars. Oh. Um, so this is the cheapest bourbon you can get in our in our store. Um, it's made for mixing. It's not it is not made for sipping. That being said. It could be part of the problem is that people go into this going, oh, I want bourbon. This is what I'm expecting is bourbon. Maybe if you're doing it blind, maybe you think this is good and you think it's something else. I could see that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'll be honest, this was my biggest fear coming to this episode is that you guys were going to like it. And I'm just be like, yeah, we're just, we're, we're done. Well, <laughs> I like it. I don't think I like it as a bourbon. That's right. Right. Is that is that fair? Yes. Yeah, I mean you guys didn't think it was a bourbon, so but you liked I, it though. I like it as a whiskey. You said this was ten dollars? It's ten dollars worth ten fifty milliliters. I would absolutely buy this for ten dollars. Yeah. yeah. Even I said I'd buy it for sixteen, I would absolutely buy it for ten. And and it, I would buy it as a mixer. It, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, also, so cool. so um mixing. So we got better with water, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. it did. Which is a, an important sign of something that's probably going to do better with uh, whiskey. It was had a very bold spice note on the palate, which is what you want in order to cut through a cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, the bur um, It's Bourbon Night did a video where they did a bunch of um, well whiskeys, mostly, uh, mostly bourbons. I think they may have include Jack Daniels. Um, I can't remember. You can watch the video here. Um, but they're, they, did try, they were trying to find out what the best bourbon was for bourbon and coke. Okay. This won that, I believe. Again, double check me. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Old Crow won as the best bourbon and Coke bourbon. Yeah, I would. I could absolutely see this winning that kind of I, competition. I think I would put it as a mixer with certain cocktails, uh, bourbon and Coke. I don't think I would. I don't think this would be my go-to for making something like a Boulevardier. Or right. Or I would in Manhattan or more something. bourbon and coke, um, Moscow or, uh, mules, 
Maybe. Maybe mules. I would do yeah. like whiskey sours with whiskey this. Sours, yeah. Yeah, so I for think... all those contests who are like, this is not made for sipping, we know. <laughs> it still kind of tasted decent though. And yep. even me knowing what it was, I was like, oh, this actually tastes pretty good this time around. I also think this one kind of gets a boost from the one prior feeling very light. Mm. Yeah, the mm. one previous one was a very light whiskey. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's our review of that. Um, we This is now um, the fourth whiskey we have for going into our next round of budget bourbon barrels. Uh, so we have two now in the backlog of a bottled and bond bourbon or budget brawl and a and our well bourbon brawl. So this will be going up against um, Evan Williams and Ezra Brooks and a very old Barton who are the current reigning champions. So we'll see how they do in a blind. And until next time, We'd love to hear from you. Please leave us a comment, a like, subscribe, and hopefully you haven't lost total faith in us. <laughs> May the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, This, this drinks, drinks on me. me.